Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Dov. And I'm Anne. And we're from IDEO. And we are going to do something really stupid tonight. We are going to um, attempt to use these things on stage. And we have been here for like almost two hours. And they just started working like minutes ago. Um, and hopefully they will stay working for just a few minutes longer. Um, and actually, we need, once we get that going. Yeah. Okay. So bear with us if we need to like unplug and replug and take a long time, like two hours or something in between slides. Um, <laughs> but in the meantime, um, we wanted to actually. Yeah, well, before we start, let's get a read on the room. Like, who here has done VR before? Who's had an experience? So raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's such a Bay Area we, crowd. Yeah, we are so <laughs> in Silicon Valley right now. Okay, who hasn't had a VR experience? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, good. Loud and proud. Who hasn't? All right. Excellent. Okay. So, um, we do. Are we, uh, are we good? Is it happening? Okay. So we need a virgin, I mean, a volunteer. <laughs> Wait, I didn't tell you to put your hands down. So if you are a virgin VR and you would like to come up in front of hundreds of people and stumble around in broad daylight um, and possibly even fall down, this then come chance. on up. Who is it going to be? But not a guy. It's got to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> There's a girl. Oh, wait. Oh, and there's got, one, too. Let's take two. the one from the back. Um, you, you can definitely come up afterward. You'll be like, at the end, you'll be the head of the line. <laughs> and besides, this is probably not going to work anyway, so don't, <laughs> you're not going to be missing much. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to uh, so, drop the mic. Okay, well, uh, just, so first... Actually, hang on. Let me just make sure this thing is... <laughs> so we have a couple of experiences for you to try, actually. So... We're, we have two setups here tonight, so... And do we have the mic or the speaker on? Okay. okay. So, so, our, so wait, what's your name? I'm Anna. Anna. Hi. Can everybody please give Anna a round of applause? This is amazing. <laughs> I, I, are you nervous? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't do, know what I signed up for. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> do, do you ever suffer from... Uh, actually, um, should I ask her a question about like her social life before we, oh, yeah, before do, we start? Do, yeah. That's um, good. That's good. I like that. Did you happen to go to see Beyonce on? <laughs> Dov did. It was on Facebook. Does that you, help? You saw lots of images on Facebook. <laughs> Wait, other girl, vol potential volunteer. <laughs> did you see Beyonce? Damn it. Any girls that saw Beyonce? Should we split up the experiences? Come on up. Let, we are going to go number experience maybe, number maybe two. Maybe you'll get experience number two. Yes. You're a, vir you're a VR virgin who saw Beyonce? Oh. Okay, forget it. All right, all right. <laughs> then now, all right, so Just we're going to stick plan. with Anna. Okay, Anna, what was your last concert that you saw? Um, I think it was Odessa a few months ago. And how much did it rule? It was pretty good. <laughs> it ruled. Oh, no, what was, what was like, oh, my God, that was an amazing concert. What was the last one you went to? Oh, that one was pretty good. They had, like, uh, orange confetti coming down from the ceiling. That was fun. Any fire? Okay. There was fire at Beyonce. Right. Okay, right. we got to get this thing on, show on the road. Okay, I'm going to put this down. Come on over here. I'm just going to get this thing playing, and then, so why don't you come over here, stand right next to me, and I'm going to strap this onto your head and destroy your, your do. <laughs> we weren't able to get... Uh, video for this one, but we're going to share the audio. Oh, we didn't tell her who she is. No. All right. You are going to see, see Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney in live Las in Las Vegas. Vegas. Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Okay. Can you kind of get that? Can you see without is it cross -eyed? Okay, so tell us what's happening in there. Um, it's kind of like I'm floating above Paul McCartney, and he's like playing right there. Look around a little bit. There's a mic. Are you just blowing your mind? You can, oh. you can look around. Okay. <laughs> now what there's fire. Fire. <laughs> the perspective moved. Sorry, did I hit you? <laughs> That's cool. No, come on. Oh, okay, honestly, is it, is it cool? It, yeah, it's cool. All right, great. All right, thanks. All right, enough of that. 
Okay, please, please turn off that speaker. Okay, good. Okay. So was it as good as Odessa? No. <laughs> Is that just because you don't like Paul McCartney? You don't like the Beatles? What's up? Yeah, I'm not a huge Paul McCartney fan. It was like a little blurry, yeah. but it was cool. The perspectives were cool. That's fine. Well, and, and did you go to the concert with, did you go see Odessa with anybody? Were you with friends? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. All right. And did you have a good view of Odessa? Like, you were close to the stage? Yeah, pretty close. Does it help to be right next to Paul McCartney? Uh, it, that might help. Yeah. Would you rather be next, would you rather have that or would you rather be at Odessa with your friends? Probably Odessa with my friends for right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, good. Now, are you ready for your next experience? This one is, you tell her what it is. And I'm so, so this is Tilt Brush, and it is um, like a painting program where you can paint in a three-dimensional world. Okay. Get on your head. Do we have the, is it, do you need to be Oh, perfect. What? Device is not connected. This happened. Here, I, I'm going to stand out of the way. We have to do that. Remember what I said? This yeah. is, it, maybe, we'll let you know if you need to get a piece of pizza. Okay, we'll give it just a few, we'll give it like 30 more seconds and then we're gonna. Who's tried, a, who's tried one of these HTV, HTC Vives? Raise your hand. You've done a Vive? And okay, wait a second. Ke raise your hand if you've tried it. And now keep your hands up if you liked it. And I want to hear some of the, like, what was your best experience that you had? Just sh some, somebody shout it out. What? Tilt brush, why? What, and what was, what was what, I mean, what made it? How did it make you feel, though, as you were doing it? Magical. That's good. OK, so beyond, besides tilt brush, OK, we're going to give you 30 more seconds. Let's take two more answers. Next. What's your favorite experience back there? And what's that? Is that like Guitar Hero, but like in VR? Uh, awesome, DDR and uh, Guitar Hero, but in VR. Okay, let's see one more, and hopefully I see a green light after we hear one more. How about, a, is there a woman in here who's had an HT, a Vive experience? Oh my God, seriously, no, that's impossible. No, there was one. <laughs> There was one woman who had a great vibe experience and another one. A McDonald's experience. And what, yeah? Uh, you could, oh, so it was kind of a tilt brushy thing. You could paint whatever you wanted as long as it was like yellow and red and then McDonald's would print it out for you. <laughs> okay.
All right, so shall we call this a failure and move on? One more thing, okay. So let, we'll, we'll just kind of freestyle a little bit. So me and Anne are here to talk to you not about how to make VR and not about tools. Clearly, we're totally incompetent in that regard. Yeah, totally. Oh, we need to stand out of the blocking. We need to stand not in between the, the lasers. But who's heard of IDEO before and knows like a little bit about IDEO? Okay, cool. good. So we're gonna talk, what we're going to talk about today, once we get back to our slides and everything, is um, how to design for, um, for VR in kind of a human-centered way and tr trying to design like that. So It's really trying to understand what are the reasons that it is awesome for us, like what's satisfying and neat. Yeah, we're going to be talking a lot about scratching and itches. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so, so how, what's the prognosis? Timony is shaking her head. Yeah. Okay, I think we should move on because I think we're taking more than our fair All share right. of time. Yeah, indeed. Let's, let's just go straight into our thing. An Anna, thank you so much. That was awesome. Can we plug the monitors back in? We made a valiant attempt. It, it was stupid, but we tried. And we're all geeks, so hopefully you will. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thanks. I'm not getting, tripping over the thing. Okay. Okay, so before you leave, let's. Are we seeing our slides? Wait, Scott, one more. Not one more second. Not that good. Let's <laughs> get rid of these things. And how do I control this thing? Okay. If you ever come back, if you're ever invited to come and speak at Designers and Geeks, please do not try to do what we just did. It was ambitious. We knew. There we go. Yes. All right. Thank so, you. So there's no experience to you right now, but that's okay. okay. That's good. <clears throat> All right. So how was experience number two? And <laughs> so. <laughs> As we alluded, what we're here to talk about is why some experiences in VR or just generally are awesome and others kind of suck. And like, what, what's that all about? <clears throat> and so the experience that we set up to suck was really the Paul McCartney experience. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were trying to figure out like, what, sh what should I say? What should I say? If what's the correct answer? It was so, bad. Let me ask you this. <laughs> If it was okay. <laughs> no, no, so you just it was bad. Okay, could you have sat in that um, in that space for two hours? Um, no, I'd probably get like motion sickness. Yeah, and you probably get all sweaty and everything. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so, um, so the thing the thing about that experience that um, that me and when me and Anne were talking about it is the the reason that we think it sucks is because it was feature it was it was designed with feature centered design as opposed to human centered design and we feel like in a place like we're living in right now in the Bay Area with all of these engineers and everything who are like designing things and maybe they really shouldn't be we feel like. Um, the easy thing to do is to design around experience, excuse me, features, and we find that those don't generally end up with the best experiences. And at IDEO, that's sort of our approach is to, to take the opposite way and go and say, okay, what is it that people are really, what, what's the reason they're doing the things they do? Like what's really driving them to have these crazy experiences or to do the strange things that we do? And, and that's where we start, we talk to people. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to strap this thing on your head, to get all sweaty, to not know where you're looking, to stumble over things, and then to not have it work in the meantime. But yet, it can be a very, um, it can be a very compelling experience. So if people are going to ridiculous lengths to have experiences in this really ridiculous thing, then there must be some, something compelling underneath it all. So why do we go to concerts? Yeah, so when, when me and Anne sat down to, to, to start thinking about VR, we thought, let's choose the most vexing experience, the worst experience possible, and let's see if we can understand why it's so bad, and then let's see if we can design it to make it better. And we found this concert experience to be like the worst thing ever. And so, and so we thought about it really, well, why we go to concerts for the music, right? We go to see the artists do their thing, it's the sound, the show, right? 
Bullshit. We don't. Who goes to a concert to, for the sound and for the for the for the pictures and for the sounds? Yes. Okay. When was the last time you listened to a live album? <laughs> so we f I we feel like the sound sucks at concert. It almost always does. And I was at Beyonce, and she was either this small, or the dude in front of me was either this tall. And overall, the experience of the sound and the vision sucked. But yet. The concert was amazing still. So why do we really go? Okay, so we need another volunteer. Why do you go to concerts? Not I know. Why do you go? The social experience. social experience. Sounds good. Anybody else like to go to concerts? Mosh pit. Good. Interesting. Okay. Bragging, Bragging rights. Right. That's okay. Good. And any more? One more. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking, that's the only one that doesn't really fit into all the rest. Um, so when we were thinking about it. So we were thinking that the reason we go is really, it's about connection. And Anna said this earlier, it's like to connect with your friends that you're going with, to connect with other fans, to feel the energy of the room, to connect with the artist. You're there for this feeling of connection. So, and connect in the mosh pit, like the most intense kind of connection there is at a concert, maybe. So what about empathy? We've all heard that VR is the empathy machine. Um, and VR, it's true that VR is really good at a certain form of empathy. Because in, in, in VR, you kind of get empathy for free. Because my head is the gaze and is the camera and controlling it, it makes it e really easy for me to feel like I'm in a space, like in the concert or in um, a, a refugee camp in Sidra. And so empathy is a really powerful and easy way to um, uh, experience to have in, in VR. But the thing is that um, empathy is when you guys talked about why you go to concerts, I didn't hear anything about empathy. I mean, I know that, like, for me, there's a little bit of empathy in, like, what's it like to be Beyonce on stage? And, of course, I want to know that. But actually, it's much more about all the things that you guys mentioned, which is connecting with people, bragging rights, moshing, things like that. So, it's all, so we feel it's all about connection. And so we feel that concert experience was designed around empathy. So it gave you multiple viewpoints on the stage and the audience, so you could have multiple POVs. And that's ultimately an empathetic feature. And so it took the most obvious feature of them all in VR and designed an experience around that. But the thing is, if empathy is an itch that I want to scratch, when I go to a concert, if I'm not itching for empathy and I'm itching for c connection, and yet I'm, I'm in this experience which is all about empathy, that's like scratching an, the, an itch that doesn't exist. And that's not just bad design, it's downright uncomfortable. And that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we think that that concert is really a bad experience. So, great, big deal. What do we do with that? Empathy, connection, what do we know? Yeah, so in other words, We've learned that the, um, thinking about, what, about this itching and scratching helps us to get to the heart of what an experience, of why people are seeking an experience. And so we feel at IDEO, if we can get down to the itch, if we know what the itch is, it's so much easier to scratch it. If I'm like, right there, right there, it's so much easier to scratch it. But if we're just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying with empathy and trying over here and over there, it's like we might never find that itch. So if we want to design, and we don't think that you can't have a compelling concert experience in VR, but if we wanted to design for that, we think that you want to design around the idea of how do we enable better connection. And so to do that at IDEO, we ask questions, really pointed, provocative questions to try and guide our process. So some, some questions to get us started. Yeah, so for, ex so for example, we thought, all, so we're going to design only for connection and ask um, questions only about connection and see where that gets us. So, for example, we might ask questions about existing behaviors, such as, how might we create and support an I was there, here's my proof, Instagram share and VR, bragging rights. Or we might think about the arc of an experience and how it might change over time. And so we asked, how might we enable the fluid and natural transition from wallflower to mosh pit <laughs> when a favorite song comes up? God, think, you guys were awesome in your answers. You totally like we planted set you. us up for success. Um, or we might simply ask how folks already connect at concerts, such as how can we allow participants to host or piggyback with live concert goers? 
So are there other itches though? We've talked about empathy. We've talked about connection and there's got to be other reasons that we look for, for experiences and, and playing around with VR experiences and just really kind of looking around in the world and why we have an immersive experience of any kind, an experience that we really lose ourselves in, we started to see some other, some other types of experiences, some other patterns in, in what, what helped us lose ourselves. So we've got connection, we've got empathy, and then we've, we've found sort of four others. There's probably more than that, but the four that we've sort of rested around um, in addition to connection and empathy are discovery. So discovery is why we go travel somewhere. It's like we, we arrive somewhere in a foreign place and immerse ourselves to learn. It's why babies put razor blades in their mouths to try and like see how it goes. Um, there's mastery. <laughs> you don't put razor blades in your mouth? Um, there's mastery. Mastery is all about mastering a skill. Think about this as this first person shooter games. This is... Uh, Puzzle games, like think about Monument Valley, scratching that itch. Um, and, and VR is actually playing in some interesting ways in mastering a skill. Like there's surgery uh, training. So if you have a very rare uh, procedure, you can practice now in VR. And that's a really interesting way to use it. Or sports. NFL is doing some really exciting things using VR and training as well. Yeah, in, in fact, um, there was somebody, uh, a company developed a training tool for the NFL and practiced it on a team. And now the NFL has, um, has um, enforced that all teams have to buy the system and use it because they found that it gave such an unfair advantage to the team that was like beta testing it that they, in, in order to level the playing field, they needed to have everybody start using it. So it's incredibly um, efficacious at um, mastery, for example. And then creation, if we would have had our experience that worked, we would have had Tilt Brush, which had some, some seeds of creation in it. Also, Minecraft is another one playing in this territory. And um, one of the, what, the last one, we're calling it transcendence. And we feel like it's, in, in a way, sort of at the very heart of the promise of VR. Um, so, you know, what if I could be a woman or what if I could change my body and be a different creature and have an experience that's totally different and outside of, outside of what I would nor typically be able to, to, to um, experience in my own body? And we already do that in real life, too. Think drug trips and meditation retreats. So um, we just wanted to close out <laughs> by On saying... Drug trips. That this is kind of how we how we think at IDEA. We try to like really um, break out of the feature center design and really start to ask about itches and how we can scratch those itches. And so this is like um, our this is a tool that we use for understanding, but also um, designing around VR. And um, it's this is sort of like the basic level of it. But we found some really interesting things where um, we talked about experiences as kind of like a single. Um, there's a single driver or a single reason that we go and seek these experiences. But we found that when you start to combine different drivers, like, um, for example, we have an educational practice. And so we found that if you combine discovery and mastery, you start to get a much richer experience. And then we found, furthermore, that, like, discovery is a really great, attractive way to pull people in, but it's ultimately pretty shallow, and it'll kind of, like, discovery will only get you so far. So if you lead with discovery and then follow through with mastery, um, that's an, an, a recipe for how to design an experience and keep pull people in and then keep them in for the longer haul. So there's some really interesting discoveries that we're making with this as we learn to understand and design in VR. Thanks there you very have much. it.